o'clock, three o one. Uh, okay, cool. We are also live streaming on YouTube. It's setting up. So we're we're live streaming on YouTube. Yeah, nice. Three o'clock. There we go. There we go. Um, I'll be able to see the comments there as well. Okay, it'll be interesting to see if we get some people on on YouTube as well. Welcome, Masood. Hello from Italy. Nice. Where in Italy? What city in Italy? It's coffee time. It's 2.55 in the afternoon. Time for an afternoon cup of coffee. Yeah. Milan. Milan. Nice. Oh, nice. I was there around two months. Yeah. Yeah. Two, three months ago I was there. Nice. It's a nice I've city. never been to Milan. I've been to Rome, Venice, Florence, but not Milan. But I hear it's beautiful. It is. Fashion, fashion capital. Yeah. Guys, we're going to get started in five minutes. Apparently, the webinar was letting people in early. Uh, and then just um, I'll hit record on my end. Just if I, if I don't do it, Mansoor, just sure. remind me when we, uh, when we get started to hit record. We had a... Great webinar coming up for you. So thanks for joining live. How was BDSS, Mansoor? It was great. It was great. I, I think they liked my presentation. So and awesome. it was a presentation about tacos and how to find underlying issues. With Here's the bigger tacos. question. Is $10,000 coming your way? Well, we will That's see. Speaker. We will see. Yeah, I hope but so. I was I, I was happy about the whole thing and also uh great like it, it was practical talking about how to look at when your tacos is high how to look at all the aspects that are impacting it. Cool, great. People come up with very clever ways to connect with you on LinkedIn. You know, they send you a message and they want to give you some reason to connect, you know, because then they're going to pitch you something, whatever. So now I got a message. Hi, Liron. It's the second time your name has popped up on my LinkedIn suggestions. I thought it would be interesting. To <laughs> well, if it's the second time. That's a good one. That's okay. A good if it's the second one. time. Must. I didn't want to connect on first time, but second time. Yeah. If you said, hey, Liron, you popped up on my connections, I wouldn't, wouldn't go with it. Uh, okay. I see Eddie, Gabriel. Guido, Guido, I I know who you are, just probably mispronouncing your name. Masood, Kate, Bia, Anum, Alex. We're a little early. Apparently, webinar was letting people in before the start. So uh maybe maybe when you joined, you hit start or something. Did you, Munzer? No, I no? just it's yeah, weird. joined uh directly. Didn't ask me anything. Okay. Uh, maybe it was in the settings. Um, anyway, we'll we'll wait another two three minutes, and then we'll get started. In the meantime, I can show you my recent new device. It's called the Apollo Neuro. It's like a neuroscience thing. It gives you certain vibrations for sleep, energy, like different things, settings with an app. Yeah, I remember you explaining. Yeah, yeah, I haven't used it. I haven't used it in a while, so I, I started to use it again. Have you um, seen any? Like, do you see the difference? Um. I think so. I have to keep using it to make sure it's not placebo. <laughs> um, but I think so. And I'm starting to use it more sleeping at night. So I'm seeing if my stats get better, you know, because they say stats. So that, that will kind of show for sure without being biased. All right. But um, yeah, let's see. It's backed by science, like neuroscience. I actually, I want to see who here is thinks that they are pro with brand analytics, especially oh. Amazon search terms. Oh, okay. That's a good one. Um, and how much you guys are using it? We are, we are talking about Amazon search terms on their brand analytics.
Okay, here we go. I'm going to, um, let's see. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Also, can you uh, enable the screen sharing for me? Yes. Uh, hold on. You, you can't screen share? No. Okay. Uh, hold on a second. Okay, I'll make you I'll make you host in a second. I just wanna um I'm going to might as well make this more fun. Um and we'll we'll pull up a, we'll pull up a poll. Okay, question is are you a pro with brand analytics? You got four options. Oh, I can vote. I can vote for this. <laughs> can you see it? Can, can you see it? Um, you can I, see it, Monster, right? I, I can see it, but I can vote. Okay, we have seven out of fifteen votes so far. I wanted to vote. I'm not sure. We'll wait. We'll wait uh, another sixty seconds. We'll end the poll. Let people join. And um, I know some people signed up just to get the replay. So they will they will get the replay, and if you're here, you'll also get the replay. We're going to uh, we're going to record it um, in just one minute after we're done with this poll. We have kind of an interesting mix so far. <laughs> Did you see the choices, Monsieur? Uh, no. Uh, I'll 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 show you. I, I don't the see the results here from my side. You don't see results until. I'll send it here in a minute. Uh, we don't have everyone participating yet, but um, let's see. Okay, I'm going to end the poll in five, four, three, two, one. Here are the results of the poll. So Mansoor is awesome, actually won at 50%. It was one of the options. Do you see it, Mansoor, or no? Yes, I see it now. Okay, yeah. So no is 36%, not sure, 7 and 7%. We have one expert here. I don't know who answered yes. that, but um one person I, who said yes I, I hope we have some more insights that we can provide for that one person at least that has is expert as well for everyone else we have great <laughs> yeah. insights let's see how we do for that one person <laughs> yes well hopefully you'll still have something you can pick up on but um um if you want to share in the chat if you said yes and then what you learn um that'll be interesting with that i'm gonna hit the record button i'll do little introduction um just gonna check and YouTube. Share screen, please. yes and i'm gonna just check youtube here um if you're on youtube and watching say hello and let me see i'm gonna make you host because i'm not sure how else to give you permissions um and then oh please give me permission to record <laughs> You gave it? Uh, hold on. If not, I will make myself, uh, may, maybe make me host, then I'll record and then I'll give you Okay. back. Trying to do it. Oh, okay. I'll reclaim host. It's weird, very weird that I cannot. Uh, let me stop sharing this. Okay. Pull. Okay. I'm going to hit record. And I'm going to make you host okay uh welcome everybody to our webinar on advanced analytics my name is Liron Hirschkorn CEO and founder of incrementum digital um also an advisor to a company called eight fig um I have with me Mansoor Nirazi Mansoor is our director of Amazon advertising uh, we've both um, sold millions of dollars on the Amazon platform and have been in the space for many years and uh, looking forward to sharing this webinar with you, Advanced Brand Analytics. Uh, at the end of the webinar, we will talk a little bit about our course. If you saw the sign up for this, uh, for this webinar, it was on a course link. We're doing this webinar as part of showing you somewhat of a taste for, for the type of content that's in the webinar and called the Amazon Advertising Academy. 
Um, and the course will be open to sign up until the end of the month. We launched it in uh, December, I think November, December, we, we launched. And um, we, then, we then closed it up to add some things. We also added a payment plan and uh, reopening it. We'll close it again. We'll make more updates in the future. You'll get those updates as well. And if you if you purchase the course and, um, you know, we uh, plan to open it up again, maybe in the summer. Um, so with that, um, Mansoor Narazi will take it over. We're going to talk about the benefits of brand analytics. We're going to dive really into the search term aspect of brand analytics in this webinar and all the cool things you could do with it. I almost guarantee you, you will learn one new thing that you could do there that you don't know that could help your business from the ad side, from the creative side, understanding competitors, even in terms of product research. Um, you should be using this to understand the market, which keywords you should rank for. There's so much there. So with that, I'll pass it over to Mansoor. Um, let's get started. Um, hopefully you guys are excited uh, and uh, we'll learn something new. Great, thank you everyone for uh, joining the webinar. So let's jump into it. We are gonna talk about advanced brand analytics, everything brand analytics, my most favorite tool from Amazon. What we are gonna talk here is that what are the available reports on the, on the brand analytics? And we will uh, kind of dive into the use cases that we can have there. So let's see what brand uh, analytic reports are, what type of reports you have access, search catalog performance, search query performance, repeat purchase behavior. Uh, we have access to demographics, Amazon search terms that I'll talk about this. Amazon for a while, for Few days changed it to top search terms, and now it is back to Amazon search terms. You don't see that top search terms. And finally, market basket analysis, as you can see here, you guys by now should have access to all of these tabs. And in this, in this actually webinar, for the first, we are not gonna talk about that. We had another webinar uh, covered the whole thing about search query performance, about the support template. So the top two, we are not gonna cover. For brand analytics, you can have access under brands, brand analytics, and let's jump into the top search terms or Amazon search terms. The dashboard provides visibility to the top search terms for a particular time frame ranked by search frequency. It shows the top three clicked products with their click share and conversion share of search for each search term. So this is a screenshot. We are going to go, by the way, uh, back and forth between the Seller Central, Amazon, and uh, to the slides, so to understand what exactly we are talking about. But this is a screenshot that shows you the search terms. It is sorted by the search frequency rank. It means how often they are searched by customers. So if the Valentine's Day gives its number one, it, is, it means that it is the top searched keyword by the customers. And for every term, you can see the top three uh, clicked product. So what are the top three clicked products? You will see that in this table. Monsieur, it's also interesting, right? If you, if you go here, like you can go to the next screen, just my orders is the number three most search term. It just shows the right. level of right. sophistication of the Amazon customer, because obviously there's a button you can go and see your orders. You don't need to search for it. But yeah, it's, it's interesting kind of, that how it, many people doing it actually. Right, it gives you <laughs> it gives you a good view, you know. Of, of I don't know if there is anyone here that uses my order search <laughs> to uh, find that. It's, it, it's interesting. Yeah, it is. It is interesting. So the reporting range. There are different reporting range: weekly, monthly, quarterly, as you can see here. And uh, you could do the fil uh, You could do the filtering. Actually, I didn't change this slide. I forgot. But you can. You have uh, different filters here with search terms and inter asins and products. We are going to talk about it. So you could do this different filtering. This is screenshot that you see here is from top search terms. So for I think for a week, Amazon changed the Amazon search terms to top search terms. And what they added was top clicked brands for each query and top click categories. Then you had all these filters by product, by brand, by category, but they took it away. 
I don't know what is the thing with Amazon. Seems like, I don't know why they took it away, but it's not there yet in any of our account. Maybe in your account, you still have access, but I don't see, I don't think- It's fairly access. common to see stuff like this. They, by mistake, release something that they're working on and then they realize it's not done or it shouldn't have been released and, and they pull it back and this will probably show up again at some point in the future, but they probably realized that something is off in the data and they they took it back. Yeah, probably. So here is a bigger screenshot that you see all the terms. You see top click brands. Actually, it was interesting because you have a top three ASINs here, right? But right. also you can see for that term, what are the top clicked brands that getting most of the market share or what are the top clicked categories in that uh, for that keyword that your uh, query that you're searching it was interesting it's not there i, I guess they are going to bring it back but let's see when it's also it, i would say also it's helpful maybe minimally right like you potentially could see which category you may want to target if you're doing like category targeting Right, um, right. Or which brands to go deeper in and, and investigate. But overall, it, it's to me, this is not critical. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I don't know. Let's see if, the, if it evolves. Yeah. So uh, let's go to use cases. And I'm going to name them. Then we go to Seller Central to Brand Analytics. One is branded and unbranded keyword search. Competitor branded research seasonal products keyword research, event-related keyword research, like Christmas, Valentine's, gift-related, discovering the highest potential keywords for ranking. So let me actually, I'm going to pause my uh, sharing my screen just quickly to go to Seller Central and then reshare my screen. And um, if you have questions, you can put that in the Q&A. We'll be monitoring it throughout and we'll either stop or leave it till the end, depending on the question. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we're going directly now into brand analytics in Seller Central. Right, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, awesome. So here is that I'm gonna give you all the tricks and then uh, we will talk about uh, everything that we discuss. The first thing that you need to know, anything here in search term that you search, let's say uh, white comment. So you are now what you are doing, you are filtering all the search terms that are appearing to the search terms, to the queries that, in, uh, that have white in it. So it's, it's looking also in the broad match. For instance, if I say white and dog, anything that has dog and white in the term. So you see dog white and dog white and powder, it's what I uh, search for white and dog. So, uh, that is, uh, that's one thing that you need to understand. Any search here is going to bring you uh, in broad. And when I say, talk about branded searches, let's say you have a brand that is called Zesty. You want to find your branded terms. You click Zesty and there you go. Right away, you can see all the keywords that have Zesty in it. And in my opinion, the brand analytics is the most comprehensive keyword research tool, and even even other tools, third-party sellers can uh, third-party platforms cannot compete with it because this comes directly from Amazon. It is up to date. You can see back and forth in the different timeline, and Amazon just showing you that this is for this week. Here are the results that you see, and I'm pretty sure last time actually with Liron we checked. I think something had the search frequency rank around 500. The search volume from Helium 10 for that keyword was around 300, 400. I don't know. I don't remember the name, the exact number. But the point is that you even see the long tail keywords, everything that you right. need for your, uh, to target. So here you see for Zesty, if your brand is Zesty, right away you go search and also you can see for your branded terms, if in case if there is any competitor taking click share. So this you pause here, this product getting 17% click share, uh, conversion share, it is this fee. Or number two, again, this fee, 12%, and finally the third. And I'm sorry, according to our thinking, sponsored is included here. 
sponsored is uh, I believe everything is uh, included here sponsored and organic and, and I guess what are the benefits for a brand to look at their own well look at their one, own brand one one of the benefit is that you want to defend your uh, branded terms, right? So let's actually do a test here. This is Zesty Paws Allergy. See, they have their headline ad, they have their product, so they are defending their search term. Uh, and they are doing a great job because they are targeting with allergy. Right. We're going to talk about this with allergy related copy and allergy related right. product. So that is that is and, and there's many brands where if you do search the words different pro like search Lego Star Wars just as an example, um, you could do it. You could do it. Let's go with Lego in, in Seller Central, but uh, Lego Star Wars comes up, um, and actually, yes, their ad does focus on 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 Star Wars, which on is Star good. Wars. But yes. I've seen times with them and other brands where they are not going as targeted. Um, and, um, and as a result, as a result, their, their ads aren't, uh, as, uh, um, I mean, go to Harry Potter Lego. That would be interesting too. If they're, if they're very, uh, it's right there. If they're very targeted on that. So here you go. First of all, um, it's not, uh, it's a different, um, uh, brand that's in that space, which is kind of surprising. Um, and so they don't have the spot. So pretty surprising. Yes. Lego, Lego's not uh, not defending that. Yeah, hundred percent. And it's got a oh. lot of search. It's got a lot of searches. Five thousand is amazing. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a high search volume probably if the SFR yes. is five thousand. So this is how you can do your branded searches, right? And in contrary, you have a competitor, direct competitor that you are competing with. You could do the same thing by one search. Let's say uh, pet honesty, right? If your pet on pet honesty is your competitor, you search here for pet honesty. Download this, which is Zesty Paws, like probably right the second competitor behind Zesty Paws. Yes, exactly. In the space. And by downloading this in one click with one search and filtering, you get all the terms that your competitor, uh, your click on, click on Pet Honesty Calming Hemp, hemp over there, 1.799. So here you go, right? Like this is one where in reality- Actually, they are not targeting correctly because they correct. are showing uh, multivitamin. So it's not correct. a good ad. Now they are doing it on the sponsored product side, or at least it's the first one that's showing up. It could also have to do with the Amazon algorithm recognizing that. It's uh, it doesn't do as good a job recognizing that I think on sponsored brands. So it's not actually set up correctly because somebody's searching for the coming, and then they're seeing the ten for one as the first thing. And on mobile, that takes up most of the screen. Right. So so um, not not necessarily doing great with that sponsored brand ad. In fact, it's, calming it's, is not even one of the three that they're showing. Yeah, it's not. Probably they are targeting a keyword like pet honesty in branded, right? Pet honesty as probably phrase or broad. And this headline ad being triggered by just targeting. I also, I also <laughs> side note, I think their past, which is on the left there, their calming hub bottle looks better. The rendering looks better than the new ones. The new one looks actually like very that flat. Is interesting. I wanted to mention that I love their packaging before, but yes. this new packaging hard to I'm read. Not a, I'm not a fan of me neither. It's hard to read. It's very flat. You mm. see the new, the, the old bottle stands out, right? But uh, yeah, they sold, they sold the company to private equity. So somebody went in and made changes. Right. So this is how you do research for branded. Uh, your branded keywords plus your competitor's branded keyword. Now let's go one step further. We talked about uh, we talked about unbranded keyword search. This is what probably you are looking for. So a few things that you need to understand. There. First is any ASINs that you put here. Let me put one ASIN here. Uh, I'm not going to click on there. So Some nice. <laughs> let's uh, take this ASIN. So. I'll take this ASIN. Any ASIN that you put here, you want to get all the queries that this ASIN is ranking among the top clicked product. 
right? It could be one, two, or all, three. All the all the key all the all the keywords all the keywords where that product is in the number one, two, or three clicked ASIN spot. Yes. So now it becomes more interesting by the fact that you can put as many as products there as you want. Let me open another product. So in, in reality, this is kind of like a Cerebro for those using Cerebro. Helium then, or Jungle yeah. Scout has a similar thing where you can put multiple ASINs. You just need to put an in space and any time frame that you want, apply. With this easy solution, you are doing, doing Cerebro. And what happens? You are getting all the queries that at least one of these ASINs. Right. This is an or, right not, an, not an yes, and. It's or. It's or. So now, how I would do product research is this. Let's say I want to do a product research for dog white. My process is this. Actually, I have to mention something else before moving to that. This one is something that not many people knew by the time, but anything you search here, let's say vitamins, dog vitamins. So now you are searching in the product title. You are getting all the queries that at least one of the top click products has dog vitamin in the title as a broad, dog and vitamins. So as a broad, not exactly. So, which is also very interesting because you uh, can potentially find competitors to target, right? Um, that are uh, that are showing up for a particular um, keyword that maybe you wouldn't right. find before, um, or you can find keywords to to target too. Because in reality, like that third search, natural dog company. In theory, I don't know which. Let's look which product which product ranks. Uh, not that one, not because you don't. Oh, you don't have dog and vitamins, right? You need both. You need both. So, yeah. so it's not number one. Let's look and see if it's one of it. Uh, uh, natural dog company. Here. Uh, it's not number. Natural one, dog probably. company. Uh, no, no, no. But let's see. Here it is has... because we have dog and. and you have vitamins. Uh, uh, no. No. Number three okay. has it. What's behind door number three? There we go. Dog vitamins here. Dog so vitamins. What we have in number three. Right. So, so it's interesting because you may not have thought to target that keyword, but in reality, if they're the third most clicked product, people who are searching that mm -hmm. maybe are looking for a product that, that has that I need to look at more details in the product. But again, you can discover keywords that would be a little bit of outliers because I would never sort of think of that particular keyword. And by the way, it has a lot of searches. Yeah, it does. 59,000. No, hundred percent. And the thing is that and that's a great sponsored brand ad too. It's very broad, sent to the storefront if you have right those kind of products. And you know what is interesting, Liron? I am pretty positive with just searching dog vitamins, I have got all the keywords that I need. Of course, right. you have to go refine it. There are so many right. branded, probably there might be branded keywords. There might be some keywords because you're searching for, for this as a broad. But all right. the keywords that you need, if your product is dog vitamin, if the product is dog vitamin, 100%, one of the top three products should be dog vitamin if customers it's search. Inter it's interesting, one, sir, that, I mean, what about just the keyword, the search term dog vitamins? Hmm. Why is that not coming up here? I mean, uh, it should, let's see. Because I, I would imagine that dog vitamins probably has a high search term. Well, it seems like it is not here. Dog vitamins, there you go. So it doesn't actually show here. Let's see. That is a good question. Hmm. Um, yeah, it's pretty in it's pretty interesting, unless it doesn't include the term you're searching. Nay, let's see. That is interesting. I never vitamins. There is some I think maybe they have dog vitamin and the Oh, maybe they don't have the keyword vitamins in the title. Well, that's easy. Let's search for dog vitamin and see if it comes up because then that's the case. But you would think that they would try to use the plural and, you know, if they would use both. But let's go back a little bit. So, yeah, maybe it does. Maybe it excludes the word. Uh, you already, maybe you already have the word. It excludes it. What do you mean? Meaning the word that you're that you're entering, it does not include in your search results. 
even though on the search term side it does, but maybe on the product side it doesn't. Well, let's see here. I, I don't see, it seems like they don't have it. Why can't is- here? Oh, they, they have dogs. That is why uh, they don't have search, dogs. Search for dogs. Yeah. Vi- vitamin. Vitamin. Vitamins. Vitamin. Well, yeah. If, if that's the case, it shows you that you have to search in different uh, formats. Types. Yeah, formats. Dog, white dog vitamins. Yeah. So that word, because it's dog and not for dogs, which how right, they typically correct. write it. You have to have even even for branded searches, right? Like for uh, zesty, like honesty. Okay. People might search like this, or they might search without space. So you have to you have to keep right. that in mind and search for both of them. Right. This. And as you see, actually, some and it has search on. Search terms. Yeah. So th- yeah, that's a that's a great point. So if your your product is dog vitamin, keep in mind if you are doing keyword search with this, go for dog vitamins, dogs vitamin as right. well. Right. And then or, what you're gonna what you're gonna need to do is really look at these keywords and refine it because uh, I saw here dog multivitamins chewable. If you have a different type, right, then you're not gonna want to target that that keyword. Yes. Um, or, or if skin, you have an you know, if you have an ankle brace for your product, I would say ankle brace will be the exact keyword that is on the title. So just apply. You got all the, all the all the all the keywords, right. and you have four hundred fifteen keywords. Right. Even so, the Spanish, right? Like it's awesome because you're really getting, you know, those terms people are searching. I saw if you scroll down a little bit, the Spanish the Spanish term showed up. Yeah, I, I wish they had some type of like exclude or something that would have mm-hmm. been great. But you could do that. You can just upload this right. and do on Excel whatever you want to do. You could do that on Google Sheets. Or what, what would you What would you want to exclude? Let's say something specific. But, for instance, product. here, yes, uh, from the title, there are things that you know for the fact that there are other type of ankle braces. You don't want to be excluded here. So you right. say okay, from title, exclude this if it's in the title. Right. Um, okay. So that is that. How you would do a quick research. And, and Mansur, one, one thing is there's no limit to the amount of ASINs that you can add there, right? No. That we have found. No. Well, actually, I'm going to show that that part now. Let's say okay. I want to do a research on ankle brace. This is going to be my process. I want to do a, a, a keyword research. I will go for ankle brace. We always in Cerebro, we say, find the highest search volume keywords, do the reverse I, I, I in, uh, on that. Liron, there are some questions, I guess. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just looking at them now. So uh, after you show this, I'll take a okay. pause. So we'll, we'll ankle start. brace, right away from here, I realize ankle brace is the uh, main, main highest keyword. search volume keyword. I'll go to Amazon, search for ankle brace. From with Helium 10, it's so slow. With Helium 10, I'm going to copy all the ASINs. Actually, I, I, I want to show this. So we while I'm doing it, Leron, you can add Yeah, okay. The question. Uh, which is the best way to find keywords for targeting in PPC campaigns, brand analytics or Helium 10? Good, good question. What, what, do you, uh, what do you, would you start with brand analytics, Mansoor? Uh, okay, like between us, but yeah. For me, brand analytics <laughs> is so fast that I'm like, I'm getting the same keywords. I don't want to go over that process of Helium 10 right away with few. And you have to know your products. You have to uh, understand how to refine and search. You will get a great list without getting to Helium 10. It not doesn't that Helium mean, 10 is not good. Helium 10 is great. Yeah, it, it doesn't but. mean that, that you shouldn't have a Helium 10 or a Jungle Scout because the Chrome extension itself of showing you the estimated sales, the search on while you're on Amazon, you know, is extremely useful, uh, as well as some of the other tools. So, um, yeah. okay. Um, if number one conversion share is less than seven to 8%, can we consider that buyers are not specifically purchasing from top of search, even that product is number one clicked, or is there any particular percentage as a metric we need to consider to determine the buying behavior? So it's a great question because- Who is asking, is that from our company? It's Who's anonymous. That? It's anonymous <laughs> attendee, so it could be from our company. I don't know. I yeah, mean, that's a great question. I that's didn't plant the question, question, but but um, whoever asked the question, it, you bring up a great point because there are certain niches that people browse more than they just than 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 they just click the things on top, right? 
Think about women's dresses. Think about STEM toys for kids. Think about anything that has design elements, right? Bed sheets for boys, whatever it is, anything that has design elements where people are going to want to scroll. Jewelry, jewelry for women, necklace for women, these kind of keywords. So um, in that case, you can see that people are not buying the things on top. So, but my, the question here specifically is, Mansoor, would you look for a certain metric to say, okay, you know what, this keyword, I don't need to be top of search. Like, what is that uh, combination yes. of have, combination of conversions? We have a slide about that, that uh, I'll, since it was asked, I'll go over here and explain yep. what it means. Let's say purse, a uh, keyword like purse, for instance. Right. So what I would do, and actually- Wow, look at that conversion share, 1.55%. Yes, this is a great example. And there are so many examples like this. If you have, if your product is in this, in this type of niches, fashion or with low conversion share, click share, or your uh, account at managing, the point is that you are saying, let's look at the click share. 3% number one, 2.5, five and a half, and plus number three, seven and a half. Right? right, seven and a half from 100%, 92.5%. Ninety-two point five of click share goes for other products. Now, let's say you're going to play some uh, math. Math here. Ninety-two point five divide this by. Let's say all the products getting the same click share. We don't have it. Let's say they are all getting right. divide by two. Forty-six products getting click in this category for this search, right? And the top click products are not getting huge click share. It means people are browsing. Let me show you here. What does that mean? You don't need to be top of search. People are caring about the design, about the type of product. Do they like it? Do they don't like it? If you are pushing to be on top of search, probably you are wasting, you're not wasting, you're spending more than you're supposed to. Because customers going across, they are kind of uh, exploring to see what they like. Does that make sense? Does that answer right. the question? I would say you could be top of search if you really want to be aggressive, but there's also a good chance somebody will, you know, you. scroll by the product. The way I would answer that is that- try but, By the way, look at that, look at that- Look at that purses and handbags category for the cacao powder. Uh, as you scroll down the page, somebody put that uh -huh. in the yeah. wrong category. Purse and handbags, interesting. But the yeah. way I answer that question is that for these type of keywords that the click share is really low among the top three products, try to be on top half of the page. If you don't want to push, that's fine. Would you, Either what, organically or PPC, try to be on top of. Uh, what would you say is that is that total percentage? Where where is it? Is it that um, if it's up to thirty percent at the top and seventy percent is at the rest, or fifty percent, or until what point would you say? I mean, I think fifty percent is a good amount of clicks if they're happening on top. But you know what? Let's look at a very detailed well, keyword and here, see what, what it is. No, for instance, this is this is a good yes. example. Let's say yes, anchor exactly. grace, right? Look at here, 25%, right. number one. Nine, 9%, so 35. And nine, 10. 45. Around right. 45, 50. I, I mean, for these, for this query, you got to be on top of search if you right. want to get more. Right. So share. probably somewhere if it's like under 20% total, 25% total, it's okay, maybe. Yes. But you gotta you gotta gauge it, I guess. You know, like yeah. eyeball it, in my opinion. Just see see what it see what it looks like. Um, I think oh, Abe um, has another question. Uh, yeah, another question. Um, does the search term report give different results when changing the keyword from singular to plural? Yes. Yeah, it does. It it looks at the the, uh, the exact keyword, the fra exact phrase that you are putting. So if I put braces. It looks at braces, finding the braces, not the brace. Related to you have to do, yeah, you have to do different type of searches. To and find and same thing on the on the other side. Right. Now let's go. Let's go back to. So we found an ankle brace. How I would do exact three row here? I will. I will search uh, for ankle brace. I downloaded all the ankle braces from here. Let's assume all of them are ankle braces. I don't want to go to the detail. Right. I downloaded this. And what I would, these are the list of ASINs, just easily copy, take it to 
Brand analytics. Brand analytics. And you can see the magic here. You don't even need to put the space. Right. Now you are seeing all the key 248 keywords that at least one of these products that are ankle brace, all of them, because you have filter, gaining top uh, three click share. And this it's a great... Um... It's a great example, too, because sometimes we think so much of the keywords and not necessarily the way a person is searching or the solution a person is searching for. For example, you could be se- you could be selling um, you could be selling something that like here, somebody is searching for uh, plantar fasciitis relief, which ankle brace is a solution to the problem, right? So it really helps you, you know, understand, um, understand. And, and again, you're going to have different kind of products. Um, this is a, this is like a, a sock, a little bit right. different than ankle yeah, brace. Probably but... it was in my search. The, I, I didn't, I didn't go to refine the ASINs, right? right. This ASIN was there. In but the but in, in some sense, like an ankle brace could be a solution to oh, that, right? It's... So you're thinking right. about potentially all the problem like for example um i'm thinking of those products that were really popular a few years ago those um uh for your posture right and pe- pe- the main keyword is like posture support etc but also lower back pain or right or or certain keywords that people are searching for a solution you could you could show up for this is going to show you that i mean probably key- good keyword research will show you that anyway but yeah definitely and uh so that is it if you refine, if you refine these results, remove the ones that are not related to your product, you are doing a cerebral reverse ASIN that does better job than uh, any any products. And also, that is one way to look at it. The other way is, if I go here, you, you could even go to to the category, find the category from the detail page, right? Go here. Let's say that's the ankle brace you go to directly without any tool if you want to understand how to do it. You can go to the subcategory here, ankle braces, and choose all those ASINs that are existing in this product. Right. Download the ASINs, remove the ones that are not your product, do your right. research and what run analytics, and, and there you go. And Mansoor, I'm not sure if we have a, a slide on this, but this is also excellent to do before you even, in your product research phase, because... You don't want to go into a niche where, let's say, there aren't as many keywords, and the main keyword is basically dominated at the top with 80% of the clicks, let's say, right? You're going to have, if you don't have a lot of keywords, and you basically have, a, you know, two, three keywords that are have search high search volume, and all the, you know, traffic is going to, you know, the top three, you're going to have a very hard time getting traction, yes. or you're going to need to do something if you're still going to go into that niche to really get the customer away from there, right? Which is a much better product, better price, and initially all, all those things. Also from a ranking standpoint, that may not be a, um, it may not be a keyword you want to necessarily, well, you may want to rank for it, but it may be difficult, right? If the if the competition is getting all those clicks. Um, at the same time, on something that doesn't have all the clicks on top, maybe you also don't need to push the rank all the way to the top. You don't need to be as aggressive. You don't have to be on top. So it's a really good way to understand also from ranking standpoint and product research standpoint, um, basically what's happening, you know, in the, in the space yeah, and yes. whether or not you should source the product and which keywords you should rank for. Definitely. So now let's talk about finding the, uh, doing keyword research for seasonal products. Let's say for instance, for Valentine's or Chris, let's say for Christmas tree, just making it up. So what you could do, first of all, the good thing is I call this travel and time. You know the season, you are right before the season, a month, two months before the season, season, your season is coming and you want to do what keywords are uh, you have to target. Let's say your season was Q4. So you go to the season. This is Q4 of 2020 or any month that you want. We go to Q, Q4. And I'll say for, let's say Christmas, Three, right away, you find all the keywords that in Q4 of 2022, customers were looking for that product because this product has 
the Christmas tree in the title. If your uh, product has that uh, is Christmas tree, it should be in the title. And yep, yeah, again, the same note. If plural, if you plural makes sense, do another search for plural and add up everything, combine everything after you have to do two searches. But this is how easily you can do that. Or for Valentine's, I, I guess usually uh, people purchase, do you purchase for Valentine on January or February, Liron? If you're a man, you purchase the the, the week before in, in, in February. Well, if you're, if you're a woman, purchase, I don't know. If you're a woman, like January 1st, you're on it. But if you're a man, it's January 4th, it's February 14th, February 7th, you're making your purchase. So uh, in that case, <laughs> you could do for Valentine's either, like there are two things. You could see what are Valentine's related keywords here, right? And you go to the month. The, the nice thing too is that like with helium, for example, or if I search today for this keyword, I don't necessarily know during the season, not just the search volume, because helium is showing me the sort of time time now, not only the search volume, but also who was at the top during peak of the season in yes. terms of the clicks. I don't know that. So I don't, I can almost predict because what people do in these niches generally is they'll go out of stock after the season, probably a lot of times, and they'll come back in a month before. And so I can also predict who's going to be my competition for these keywords yeah. in the future, besides obviously new sellers, but really helps you understand. And what types of products, like, would you think that number one product that gets the most click share on Valentine's Day gifts, plural, is a beard oil? I I wouldn't necessarily guess that, right? Oh, yeah. Five, five per, yeah, 5% of the clicks. Like, if well, I had to guess. But that but, is that is funny. I don't know why. They, no conversion. Zero conversion. It's interesting. Yeah. It could, I mean, maybe there's some manipulation there, depending on. Let's see. Product. What about the number? But, okay. This one makes more sense to me. So, who knows? Maybe that's being manipulated. But chocolate, right? Makes yeah. more sense. Beard oil, if that's true, uh, doesn't make sense. What's number three? Number three is. But that's also a Personal. photo keychain. I mean, I can see it, but what I think it's in the top three, I don't know. So it's Which very it brings, brings back the discussion of this is a great key product to uh, yes. research tool as well, right? You want to see in the season what is getting the highest click. And if, and if I wanted to be, let's say I wanted to do something interesting, I could look at these top products and maybe I come up with the way to personalize, personalize the keychain with the name and I merchant fulfill it. And I already know which products have sold the most in the season. And I'm going to go and offer something maybe better that's not being offered. Um, by the way, get the idea here for that customized go to Etsy. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah, exactly. Etsy, because like pretty much customers do and, the and same search. Mons everywhere, right? Monsieur, Valentine's Day gifts for him. Okay. The third one there. The third product is sex coupons. Uh, the second product. Oh, the the second product is, is sex coupons for him. <laughs> also, I mean, pretty clever, pretty clever gift. Um, but again, you wouldn't kind of guess. Good catch. Huh? <laughs> Good but catch. You, get, you get you you get a lot of ideas, right? Of like right. what you can create and the type of products people are buying. It's a great market research tool mm -hmm. of really what's happening that you really can't get anywhere else. Where else would you get this data on yeah. what people are buying? You can't get it on Google. You can't get it anywhere else. It's it's awesome. Uh, actually, I want to add something else here because this is a good example the top three products that you see they are top three click product as you see right. this one is 561 this one is 415 but the other one getting more conversion rate so don't make that mistake it means these are just getting highest clicks which in most cases if they are getting highest click probably they are getting probably they are getting highest shares as well but not that's always the case as we see here, can you can you um click? Can you go to that product? I just want to see it on Amazon for a second. That 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 beard oil, the beard oil one, that didn't convert at all. This is what I wanted to see. New. I guess they had they yes. were pushing it with no review, but this is a point. this is in my opinion this is some kind of manipulation bots or something that was done because um it's well it's a Chinese brand. It's got to be based in China if you look at the sold by on the name and they have no reviews. Um, maybe they sold. I mean, the fact that they didn't get any sales, like something is off. So whatever it is, this like seems to be a, man, a manip some kind of a manipulation.
Yeah, I, I feel like they, they just launched and probably they were pushing it for Valentine's by mistake because they have probably they have wasted a lot of money on this. But they got the highest clicks, no share. So yeah, they lost crazy. a lot of money in that. So that is uh, the idea about doing event now, related. Mansur, there was another, another question. If you target a keyword like dog vitamin, just adding it to the title doesn't guarantee ranking for that keyword. So what do you recommend are best practices to get ranked for the desired uh, for the desired keyword? Well, dog vitamin is not a good example because it has a crazy search volume. The search volume is high, so it's not easy to rank. But the thing is that, yes, if it is highly related, have it in your title because it has the highest kind of uh, credit. And then the way we look at ranking is that does do we have the potential to generate enough sales for this keyword to improve our organic ranking? So we look at Helium 10, the CPR is a good example of that, or you can even tell from the search volume. And what we do, we if it has a good potential and we think we have our conversion rate would be good, we target for that keyword on top of search. We show up on top of search. And as we're getting more clicks, more sales, slowly we see that rank improvement. But I would say the most important and crucial part is that you have to make sure you have the potential. You can generate enough sales for Amazon to say, okay, this, this, this belongs, this product belongs here. And right. when you target it, your conversion rate from PPC is good. Right. Es essentially, you would need to drive sales through that particular keyword. That would be the most helpful to rank. And you need to drive... A, you know, a high number of sales and conversions to uh, maybe similar or better than the competitors in order to rank above them. So dog vitamin is probably not something you would go after with a new product. You may go after more, more uh, long tails. Uh, one more question, the search conversion rate percentage that we see against the search term and product opportunity for the same search term in brand analytics, we see conversion share. So how do we differentiate between conversion share and search conversion rate? So search conversion rate is the overall market, right? Like not that particular product. It's overall the amount of people, the amount of searches, and then the amount of general conversions between the top 80%, right? Of, of the click products. And uh, that's for the market itself and the keyword. The brand analytics is showing you that particular product the conversion share on that particular keyword search. Right. Right. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to go a uh, few more slides before we are uh, over with the time. Yep. One use case is grouping keywords for headline ads or sponsored product ads. What I have a good example here. I search on Amazon for silver chain men. Look at this brand doing an amazing job showing aligning the creative image with what the customer is looking for. The same brand, I searched for silver chain for women. They have a custom image showing women, uh, women instead of man, they are showing a woman there. So they are really narrowed down. For Lego Star Wars, you saw we search, they are doing right. a great job. And for this red candles, they are doing an amazing job. Their product is on point. Their custom image is on point. And let's say, uh, how you can use that brand analytics to figure out that grouping is that you have a red candle or anything. You to have different categories to target for your product. Come here and search for red candles. You have all the red candles. Search for red candle as well. You have all those terms. Segment them based on the search volume. And now what you do, you narrow down your sponsor brand headline ad product, uh, sponsor product ads. But mostly we are talking about headline ads that you align your headline copy, your custom image with the keyword that they are customer, that customer is looking for. So you can use that for. Uh, and, and, you, and you'll see that, you know, um, you'll see that a lot of searches don't align. Go to Amazon for a second, Mansoor, and search for wigs, wigs for black men. W, w, IG? IGS. Wigs for black men. You, you'll probably see the same thing I see. Let, let's just see. Oh, come on. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Look at that top ad. Right. right? It's 
they're wasting right their away as a customer i know that i shouldn't click. click here or you know what happens if i click here maybe they have it they are going to waste money right because they have put it ad in front of me that's not for me yeah exactly um so you know just like there are some brands that are just getting it wrong um and you know maybe in this case what you would do probably what you would want to do is you if you know this if you know the keyword research and you know people are also searching for wigs for men you probably want to negate men in the campaign how right? did you come up with this keyword <laughs> uh well i i wanted to see something between when men women so i searched right. for wigs it's and, a great example actually look Mansoor, maybe i'm in the market <laughs> you know i mean could could be no it's a, it's a great example of how you have to narrow down how you have to be targeted uh, and align your headline ads with the keywords. Brand analytics is a great way to kind of narrow down. It's easy to do that category for you. Let's uh, look at few two more slides. Defining what products to feature on headline ads or top of search. I have an example, good example here. There are so many, if I search TV mounts, there are so many different type of TV mounts in the market, right? the sizes, the way they are hanging, and how do you know what products you have to be here if you want to advertise and you have all those different products? How do you know what you should put here? Brand analytics is your friend. I search for TV, uh, TV wall mount, TV mount. You can see what ASIN is getting the highest click share. For instance, here, this product getting 43% conversion rate. So it means if you have a product that is similar to this, Definitely, you have to put it on your headline ads with the same kind of uh, the size, the way it is mounting. This is an indication of how you have to be relevant to your customers because they are looking for this type of product. You can look at number two and three as well, or you could look at here as well, right? What are the most searches? Put them on uh, headline ads. And this is the last one I'm going to cover. Store subpage to feature uh, for store spotlight ads. You know what store spotlight ads are? They drive traffic to a store subpage. So each one of these are subpages. Now, how do you know if you are targeting a keyword, what subpages to show there? Again, it goes back, for instance, for Le uh, Lego. For branded keywords, I always recommend to use, for general branded keywords, to use a store spotlight and show, because if I'm looking for Lego, you don't know what I'm looking for. You have to show me different type of products. So I right away find my products. And the reason is that, yes, you appear here, but I can click. I, let's say I want to go find my product. I can click in different products and I just waste your money because you are not giving me the right product. So I keep clicking on the uh, wrong ad. But what you could do, go to Brand Analytics, search for Lego, you see that the first product purchase is Lego Star Wars. And also, what are the high frequency rank products that are searching, being searched, the keywords? Lego Star, Lego Star Wars, Lego Technique, Lego Architecture. This right. shows me that my sub pages that I have to show is Star Wars, Science and Technology, and are these three. Also, or Lego, Lego Friends, Lego. which is for yeah. girls. Yeah, and also shows you that, oh, you're right, Lego friends. And also show, gives you an idea of how you can work on your store sub pages, how you can group them to give the best kind of uh, results for your customers, the easiest M way. Mansur, there's, there's a new ad type. I want to ask you about this. Um, go, go on Amazon and search for dude robes, D uh, two words, because uh, I think you'll get the same thing, uh, space robes. I'm seeing Amazon. Robes. Yeah, R O B E S. You look at this ad on top. I'm seeing I'm seeing Amazon show sub pages. I don't think it's a store spotlight ad, but they're showing a product there and then they're showing those three are are pages on the store. It's kind of interesting. This new ad type. I've seen it pop up just recently. Interesting. Um, yeah. but I don't I don't know if this is a I don't think it's a store spotlight. Well, let's click. Let's see. It, it does go to the store, and each of those is a page. Um, oh, it goes to a. Huh. Well, this is this is the store. Uh, this is no. This is the landing page. Land, uh, but it's within maybe. the store. Well, uh, I have seen when you create landing page, when you click, it shows, up like it shows you under the store. But 
I, I yeah, but, I don't see here it is any but those things, but you see those those robes, pants and shorts and bundles are all pages. You all see right. the, the the titles. So I think yeah. the if you click there, I think that does send you let's see what to, is the one page. But this is yeah, I haven't seen uh I haven't seen that ad yet. Yeah, I, I I've just seen it like last last few days. Yeah, um, it is a it is a landing uh, page later on because I don't see that sub page here. I'm uh, I I know it's a landing page because and the reason is that the reason is that yeah I, I don't see it here. Um, are we? Uh, but by the way, if I click on their brand name on their product, it goes to this. It goes to the same thing. Page? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think it's a store. I think it's a store, but um, but anyway, it's I haven't seen this ad type, so something to explore on on what's triggering it to show up. Right. So I guess we are we have just five minutes. Do you want to talk about course or? Yes. So let's see. Let's see if we have any if we have questions. I don't see any more. I think we answered most of them. Um, we we did this webinar uh, to show you this is this is uh, some of what you know we're teaching in in uh, in in the course, uh, mostly put together by, by Mansoor, but in collaboration with Incrementum Digital. Uh, the course is a, uh, what we call Amazon Advertising Academy. It's basically from A to Z, everything you need to know when it comes to Amazon advertising. Um, we can show you, I, I would show maybe some of the mod, like the modules that yes, are in the actually, course. Yes, actually I'm getting there here. Um, and let me put the link um, in the, uh, Mansoor, maybe you can put the link in the chat because I think your host can share it with everybody. Uh, but it's course.incrementumdigital.com. Um, and um, perfect, thank you. The, and the, these are the modules. Uh, Actually, I can go to Kajabi and show okay. inside the inside. I think course. you sent it just to panelists, but th it's pretty easy to remember. Course.incrementumdigital.com. It's a very comprehensive course on everything you need to know for PPC. Um, it also includes um, templates, advanced templates on uh, search query performance, keyword research, um, um, product tracking dashboard and the KPIs that we track. Uh, and we'll include any updates that are made from a year that you sign up for, for the course and discounts and any future updates beyond that. Uh, we've already made updates since, since we started the course. So um, Mansoor is constantly working on updating new things that are coming out. Um, and we take you basically from Introduction to Amazon advertising, all the way to bonus reports, sponsored display ads, sponsored brand ads. This is a little bit of a taste um, in terms of what we're teaching in this in this webinar. We talk about DSP keyword research, how to optimize bids, how to use bulk sheets, um, um, how to transition an account. So you know, let's say you are let's say you are your account is not in a good place. Well where do you start right because we're not just teaching how to create a lot of courses are teaching how to create new campaigns but that's not real life real life sometimes you have a mess in your back end and you need to fix it well how do you transition that to um what's the process it's very different than just starting just starting new campaigns so um products that have advertising history how to transition from a structure maybe that wasn't the best structure to um you know to to uh to a better structure um, this is probably within each module is, I don't know, probably 10 plus videos uh, within each module. So I think there's like 120 different videos in, in the course. Um, and we've also now for the relaunch of the course, we've also added a payment plan that some people um, have asked have asked us um, to, um, to, to share as well. Maybe you can click on one of the modules, Mansoor, so people can see. Um, like yeah, I can go to actually, first of all, uh, we, uh, we have added two new modules, live webinars, example, and case studies. We're constantly adding, uh, all the webinars and in depth that we do there, plus, uh, any updates that we have, we add, uh, I, I can go to advanced bonus report. Yeah, so so each each one of these modules within it has its own multiple videos. How to deal with variations, um, how to uh, and then how to how to advertise them, what to measure, tracking tacos, which is also again specifically with sponsored brand, right? It's not exactly just simple. Um, using our product tracking dashboard to track your KPI. What do you do when ACOS is 
increasing, decreasing tacos, how to find the root cause, um, how to find which keywords you should you should um, rank for to increase sales. Um, a lot of a lot of uh, advanced topics that are in this course, um, search analytics, how to use it. Um, but again, this is already module 12. The beginning is more introductory. So this course basically takes you at any level. And we also marked each module if it's an advanced module or not. So let's say you're already pretty well seasoned. I would recommend you still go through all the modules, but you can also start with the advanced and skip the more basic ones. Um, so you can go straight to the to the advanced uh, advanced um, content. Um, so um, if you have any questions, you can you can email us. Um, Mansur, you're monitoring this inbox, Advertising Academy at Incrementum Digital. Uh, yes, I do. Okay, so Mansur will get that there. We also have hello at Incrementum Digital. Either one works, um, and um, we'll, this will be open until the end of the month. Um, the cost for the course is uh, 1997, or three payments of 747. Um, so we've made it a little bit easier the second time around. We have a ton of testimonials, uh, as well as some videos, and people who've already started going through the course and have seen benefits in their in their business um, as a as a result. Uh, so hope you enjoyed this webinar. The uh, email will you will get an email with uh, with a replay. Um, and final question here: Tomer is asking, not relevant to the video, but have we seen any delays in PPC data reporting today? Um, I haven't heard anything. Um, and also, we don't usually track the daily because it's not that helpful. Right, right. Um, we're, we're typically looking a little bit back any, anyway. Um, so I'm not sure, Tomer, if I see something, I'll message you. Um, I'll look at our internal channels. Um, and yeah, if anyone has any other questions, feel free to email. You'll get the replay of this. Uh, please share it. You could feel free to share it if, if you found it helpful. Um, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on another uh, future future webinar. If you got if you signed up for this, you'll be added to our list uh, for any for any future uh, webinars that will that will continue to do. And hope that you learned something new on uh, on on brand analytics. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining, guys. Uh, I don't know if you are still, I think we are still live here.